Hello everyone, Rissy Toothpick here, back again with some more Agatha Christie's Hercule Poirot, the first cases, and today we kind of learned more about the connections between the guest and the family, and we're going to go talk to the head butler and probably progress further into the mystery. Man, I just noticed, man, this guy's shoes are a little weird. He's got these red slip-ons with red socks. All right, but let's see what the head butler has to say. What can I do for you? The smell from the kitchen is becoming almost too much to bear. Ah, perfect timing. I was about to ask that everyone move through to the dining room. <laughs> Très bien. All righty. Yes, Maman. Perhaps Turkey. I would love to see my beloved's homeland. I'm sure we will decide on somewhere. Perhaps where we are both yet to have visited. It was my crowning achievement. I am not so sure you workers would agree. Are you sure? I've definitely seen your face somewhere before. I do not believe there is another that resembles these features, or brains at least. I've always liked the idea of sailing the West Indies. In that heat? With your complexion? Okay, but you lived in the capital at one time. Oui, mademoiselle. I spent much of my working life there. Maybe sleeping off half a bottle of whiskey. Let us not be so blasé with our opinions, brother. If you ask me, I don't believe anyone did. You're that officer! The shootout on the rooftop! Your face was all over our front page! It seems it is not only I that possesses great skills of deduction. You... Please, come quick! The Major has been murdered in his study! Monsieur et Madame, I am Detective Hercule Poirot of the Belgian Police Force. I ask that you all remain calm and in your seats. I shall begin my investigation immediately. Monsieur Sterling, please, lead the way. That transition was a little rough, but we finally got to the murder. The Major. A noticeable, almost sinister chill can be felt upon entering. This is Mr. Hagen's study, Detective. Would you like me to stay? I understand if you are not comfortable with such a scene. Don't you worry, Detective. I've seen much worse in my years. I am thankful to have someone of your resilience by my side. I just can't believe someone could have killed them in cold blood. Is that what you think happened? I admire your faith in your fellow man, but you will be surprised what someone will do when they feel there is no other option. Did any members of the staff have access to his office? Mr. Hagen does not allow any staff into the study. And they were all present in the staff quarters, or part of the dinner service. And everyone was accounted for? Everyone. It is my business to know all my staff's whereabouts. Tell me about the phone call the Major received earlier. Phone call? Yeah, yeah. It was one of his business associates. Do you know what associate? He didn't say. I think he was French, and the accent still confuses me sometimes. And did the Major sound any different to you? Uh, panicked? Anxious? Anything out of the ordinary? Not that I noticed. I think he was embarrassed about ending up on the floor after Master Gedeon's one punch. I would be. Your help and discretion in this matter are greatly appreciated. So my, fir my first guess is that he's actually been dead for a while. The windows open to make the room cold so we don't know time of death. Oh, we actually have a white one here. Okay, let me just kind of click on these. These will get rid of the exclamation point. It will bother me for <laughs> ever. And pretty much all these, if you don't know, they just kind of tell 
basic information that we've already learned. Okay, but it looks like we have no other thing here. Let us check the body. So he was cut. A single stab wound. I would expect to see a number of puncture wounds if the culprit had come here with the attention of murder. He was beat up as well. A result of the confrontation with Monsieur Demir. Although only one punch was thrown, there was substantial bruising to his face. I must use all my detective skills and experience here. Besides the stab wound, there is little to go on from his body. I was brought here to find the blackmailer, but discover the truth behind the Major's death must take precedence. Purple bruise and single stab wound. Ooh, am I on his... okay, damp floor. What could have caused such a large damp patch on the floor? Maybe blood, but he would have known. Okay, let's kind of do a little exploring. Hmm. It does not look as though anything is obviously missing from it. So this wasn't a robbery. A large check, some of money, and he had money and stuff in there as well. Ought to have a bucket this size for such a miniature minute amount of water. Oh, we have a connection. I'm assuming the remaining ice cubes and the ice bucket are either for the purple bruises on his face or damn floor. Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. Someone has knocked over the bucket and then repositioned it. Someone besides the major. So they did have a struggle. The snow continues to bellow in. Why this window has been left open, I cannot fathom. Let's see. Just want to make sure there's no links. There's a note in his chair. I noticed stuff down the side of the seat. You do not know me, but I know you and your past very well. Years have passed and your actions remain hidden to the world, actions that would shame even the evilest of men. The details so heinous to include them would surely bring a tear to my eye. Now is the time for the truth to be revealed to all. While not one man is to blame for the final outcome, it was you that brought about the final piece to the puzzle, the one that no one else would. If you wish to remain a free man, fill a brown paper parcel with 5,000 francs addressed to Monsieur Dupont, the barber and son's cobbler before closing this coming Wednesday. While there is time to consider your next move, I would not ponder on it for too long. When the world knows of your crimes, they will surely not ponder long on your punishment. Another blackmail letter, written in a similar manner to the ones addressed to Mademoiselle Angeline. Could the major be hiding a secret of his own? Or is he, in fact, the author of the letters? And maybe that's why he got killed. Burnt carpet as well. That's weird. Okay, where's the questions here? Just that one. Hmm. It's quite severe. Such a shame to see such a beautifully made carpet ruined. Probably by his cigar. Surprising that it has been left visible. Surely would it be a quick and easy fix. And then let me make sure there is a connection between that. So maybe recent. Was this recent? And then...
I mean, the bucket was overturned would show that there was like a a fight that broke out. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. There were signs that something occurred in the study between the major and our unknown fugitive. Evidence of a fight. A bulky safe made with security in mind. It's locked tight, but a box of valuables sit on top. Okay, so we can say Loctite Jewelry Box. So it's not important to him. Do they connect maybe? I cannot see the logic in this. Perhaps a second look at the See now if it was me, I would connect this with one of these because it tells us that this wasn't a robbery. Magnifique. The obvious items of value have not been taken. Why would the killer not take a reward? Valuables not taken. Maybe what they want is locked tight. Is there something I am not seeing? Hmm. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. Maybe they didn't have enough time. If someone had gone to the lengths of scaling the wall, they surely would have taken some valuables. Not a simple burglary. Alrighty. Make sure we got the safe there. That's it so far. I can confirm that the window was not the intruder's point of entry. Careless of me not to check the door first upon arrival. So, can we inspect it? Huh. The door shows no sign of forced entry or tampering. Could they just have knocked and been allowed to enter? So, where is that? The door? Logical entry point. See, I would connect this with not a simple burglary. But let me see here. Things are beginning to become clearer. Evidence shows that a fight or sort or of sorts broke out sometime after the killer entered the room, unobstructed. The door from the bedroom to the study was how the perpetrator entered the room. What I still do not know is were they invited in or did they slip in unknown? There we go, we finished one of them. Talk to the head guy here. Anything I can do to help, detective? Has anyone else entered this room this evening? Rehana brought him some ice for his cheek earlier. And when was that? When he returned from his cigar outside, he asked for something to be brought upstairs to ease the swelling of his face. He would normally smoke only in here. Lady Van Den Bosch doesn't like the smell of his cigars in the public rooms. Madam continues to rule her home how she sees fit, and it is her prerogative. Your help and discretion in this matter are greatly appreciated. Now that I know that the Major was not alone, it is time to search the study further in hopes of finding a clue as to who was with him. The scene of the crime has been investigated, but it does not show a straightforward series of events. The circumstances around the major cigar is one such avenue that requires further exploration. Okay. Burnt carpet. Ice bucket. And his corpse. A reasonably full ashtray, I would have expected him to at least clean this out. We already have one here, apparently. Ring of dust. Half smoked cigar. Well used. Okay. 
Okay, so why didn't he finish it? Because he dropped it on the carpet, maybe. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. The major was smoking recently, unsurprisingly, and dropped his cigar. What could have lit the cigar? A discarded towel folded and unused. No matches remain. But that will probably connect the... The empty. Oh, can we not? Oh, wait, no, never mind. I thought there was a connection, but there isn't. I thought it would connect that, you know, someone else had to be smoking. Huh. A rather organized desk containing what looks like important documents. Okay, there's another one here. Oh, there was a letter opener, huh? Maybe it was a single stab wound. I must act on thought and fact, not on. Okay, so very tidy or tidy, but ring of dust. I must take a different approach if I am to uncover the. Okay. Maybe very tidy and bucket was overturned. Magnifique. This crime scene has been tampered with. The killer clearly had enough time to cover their tracks. So they had plenty of time. Huh. A normal looking poker stand. Nothing appears out of the ordinary. Huh. It's incredibly dirty. These logs are old and covered in dust. Okay, so he's got the pokers. They're sharp. They're clean. Why is the poker so suspiciously clean? Maybe because the crime scene was compromised. Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. There is a currently no way to rule out the poker being used, being the murder weapon. And then we need to go to Muddy Logs and Ring of Dust. What a revelation! I would have expected a major to keep his belongings in a much tidier fashion. Now we can talk to the the head honcho there. Anything I can do to help, detective? For a house that has such a high standard, there is a noticeably lack of care taken in here. As I said, Mr. Hagen did not allow the staff in here alone, besides me. He was very clear on that. Seems like he had something to hide. Have the staff ever given him reason to not trust them? Nothing has ever been brought to my attention, but he was very clear no one was to be in here without his permission. I suppose it is not unreasonable. I would have thought with his military past, he would have kept it immaculate with not a speck of dust or hair out of place. But the fireplace, for instance, says otherwise. I haven't seen it lit since he has been with us. Even in the colder months, it's been in this state for some time. Your help and discretion in this matter are greatly appreciated. Okay, let's go back to this. We have another link. So, unused. Maybe the empty matchbox? Another success. I never doubted myself. There are no items that could start a fire or light a cigar. No fire source. Killer's entry to the room was unobstructed. This will not get me any closer. No. Is there going to be no fire source and evidence of smoking? That makes sense. I should not be surprised by my own skills of deduction. There remains no means to light this his cigar. Someone must have lit it for him. Someone he trusted, but who? And I'm assuming these two, maybe? Things are beginning to become clearer. Someone lit his cigar for him and attacked him when he least expected it. 
Who could have been so ruthless? The Major knew his killer. Maybe half smoked cigar. Is there something I am not seeing? It won't be this unused. Who could have been so ruthless? Order and method. That is the way to solve the problem. This one is actually kind of difficult. Because I don't think it doesn't make no sense to connect these two together. I cannot see the logic in this. Perhaps. Maybe they can be connected. Let me see. What, what do you connect? Oh, you're connecting all the way over here. Crime scene was compromised. Another success. I never doubted myself. I got short-sighted there. They lit the Major's cigar and following the brutal act of murder took the time to clean the scene. They were not in a hurry and could still be in the house. How could they remain so calm? Alrighty. Let's kind of explore a little bit more. A scruffy looking jacket is hanging upon the coat rack. The Major's scabbard is in the pocket. There's another one, apparently. The scabbard has one purpose, and the purpose is missing. So, missing knife and possible single stab wound. What a revelation! The Major's knife is missing and his body lies with a stab wound. It could very well be the murder weapon. The murder weapon remains a mystery. The killer, whose identity is still to be uncovered, must still reside in this house. And we've investigated it. Come, my little gray cells, let us solve this mystery. I kind of already did. I was not expecting to have a murder case on my hands when I arrived, but this will merely be another test for the great detective Perot. Okay, let me just kind of clear all these out. And the blackmail and the murder are probably connected. They usually are. Anything I can do to help, detective? I believe I have collected all the necessary information and evidence. I would now like to inspire his adjourning adjoining bedroom as you wish it is clear the reason for entering the major study was not to make haste with his valuables what i must understand is if the intent for murder was there the study has been manipulated following the major's death meaning they had time to return to the scene and attempt to cover their tracks the perpetrator entered through the bedroom perhaps there was something they failed to clean up behind them that can make sense of all of this I should review what clues the study yielded before I continue. If the killer still resides in the house, I must approach everyone with not only caution, but suspicion. Yeah, the head butler, he's just chilling there watching. Another letter addressed to the major. It appears he has something, someone looking out for his business concerns with the worker strike. Felix, I understand that there are a number of business concerns for you in the situation that has arisen within the factories, but I offer this piece of advice. Step back. Monsieur Becker's efforts with the union have finally opened the workers' eyes and they seek, nay demand, the fair treatment that is, they deserved for so long. The fuel for the fire has already been laid and the match is ready to be struck. You do not want to be near those flames when they ignite. I know you were once a good, honorable man. I pray that it is still true today. I must review the information I've gathered from each guest today. There may be something that will help reveal the identity of the letter's author. Oh no. German who in the house warns caution attention. Won't be her. 
won't be these because we've already found that information. This is going to be one of these. Warns about an upcoming strike. Who supports the union besides Hugo? Maybe the brothers do. Come, my little gray sons. We must think. Oh, well, hold on right here. Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. The only other union supporter I know that is passionate enough to write such a letter, Monsieur Gideon. Alrighty, we found that one. No connection here, but we will get rid of that exclamation point. And let us, us explore a little bit more. Oh. Plants lean and rely on each other to survive. Something we as a species could take a lesson from. He always has something to say about plants. Oh. The fallen snow. Yep, we've already read that before. It seems Madame Van den Bosch's heart is a trophy worth fighting for. Major Hagen, I hope you will excuse my bluntness in plain speaking, but there is a matter regarding Madame Van den Bosch that requires not only our attention, but a level of understanding and respect between us both. I am fully aware of the help that you have offered to not only Madame, but her family and household. I am also aware that you know of the assistance that I have given to Madame and the Viscount before her. We were friends and business partners, and I felt it my duty to continue to give aid and keep the Van den Bosch name at the standing that it, is, that it has always been. Having said that, it is not always as simple to keep business and personal matters separate, and this is how I found myself today. Sandra and I share a bond that, that one does not experience often in their lifetime. No doubt you have felt similar, but what may be lust to one man is love to another. While I respect you for your efforts in the war, and the generosity you have shown madam, I must request you step back from what you consider to be your duties as, at the house, and allow for madam to make her choice, the choice that I believe is obvious to all parties. I trust this correspondence remains for your eyes only, and a gentleman's agreement is enough to guarantee our agreement. It is a rather bold move to challenge the major as they have, especially with his position at the house. That is more than likely... Be here. Who loves Cassandra in this way? I must act on thought and no, it's probably mention of helping the family and Ernesto supports the family. The pieces of the puzzle are finally coming together. If there is something between Ernesto and Madame Van den Bosch, Archibald will surely know of it. And we need to talk to the head butler. Get rid of this next one. And let's kind of keep on exploring here. Huh. This could be the weapon that brought down some of the impressive animals that now fill the walls. Not very important information. Uh -huh. I'm not sure how it would fare coming face to face with such a beast. You would probably get mauled and eaten alive. A rather threatening letter has been pinned addressed to Major F. Hagen. Dear Major F. Hagen, I did not think I would ever find myself writing a letter such as this, but under the current circumstances I see no other option. Madame Van den Bosch and I have been friends for more years than I can than I care to say. That is why I can no longer sit back and allow your bullying to continue. I'm well aware of the companionship you have offered to my good friend over the years. It has been most generous, and without it, I care not to think that would have happened to her. But that does not give you the opportunity to act in such a foul and boorish manner. The day the Viscount passed, I promised that I would protect both Cassandra and Angeline, and it is a promise I will keep. You were once a major in the British Armed Forces, but your actions have mir mir mirrored that of drunken fools who hold no place in our society, let alone Madam's house. Please do not bother yourself with a response. There is not a question that requires an answer. Only a hope that you see your error and adjust them accordingly. The author speaks of bullying, and although no specifics are noted, any form of that th treatment towards a woman is not acceptable. 
we know who's connected to that. It's going to be close to the Cassandra and her being protected. Magnifique. Margot, Margot. I don't know her name, but Marge, since I haven't talked to her in a while, was quick to speak to her of her protection over Cassandra. She must take this role very seriously. Yeah, we already knew that. That one was pretty easy. I wonder how many travel expeditions have been planned while enjoying the contents of the globe. All right. I think we can now talk to the head butler, Sterling, once again. Oh, hold on. Certainly. What do you need? What do you know of the Major's relationship with the guests? The male guests, I believe, he knows in a business capacity. But I'm afraid that's all I know. I will add, though, he has not always been the easiest man to get along with. You are talking from personal experience of working for him. I am head butler to the Van Den Bosch family in their home. He has made himself comfortable, but to me he still remains... Remains... a guest. Do you know much of the Major's time in the army? There's not much I couldn't tell you. As soon as he found out my father was in the army, his stories never stopped. I am sure an officer of his rank must have many a tale. A tale is a fitting description. Not so much a pinch of salt, more like a bag is needed listening to them. What can you tell me about Monsieur de Silva, the Major, and Madame Van den Bosch? You've lost me, Detective. I struggle to believe they were both helping her out of the kindness of their hearts. Could they have been fighting for the Madame's affection? Ah, that didn't take you long to spot. On Sir Sterling, lack of real response gives me all the answers I require. Your help and discretion in this matter are greatly appreciated. Alrighty, let's connect the dot. Though the Major is generally disliked, the Major fabricated his accomplices and Cassandra has multiple admirers and someone loved her. Some would say a lucky guess. I would say a moment of genius. Now I know of Ernest Ernesto's feelings towards Cassandra. He must be the one behind the letter. Things are beginning to become clearer. It seems the guests were not fond of the Major. Written by Ernesto, but this one, multiple guests threatened the Major. Killer may still be in the building. Another success. I never doubted myself. It's highly possible one of the guests is behind the murder. This warrants immediate investigation. Based on the evidence seen in the major study and bedroom, as well what I have learned from speaking with the guests, Monsieur de Silva, Comtesse de Vols, and Monsieur de Mir warrant concern and further investigation. Alrighty, we finished another one. Now, what do we need to do? We need to talk to the head butler once again. But we're going to stop there today. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Check out the links below. In the next one, we will more likely go talk to all of the people that we have as suspects and learn who truly killed the major.